All right. Hi, everybody. Welcome to another week of TX Rockers Free Art Friday Rock Painting Class. I hope everyone had a wonderful week, and I hope that everyone is finding themselves well. As always, I would like to open... Right. Hi, Woo! everybody. That was fun. Problems with having multiple devices. Um, I would like to start off, as always, by posting all my links everywhere, because how else are people going to find us? And saying a quick hello to everybody who is already joining. Hi. And posting on the event. Okay. So, first I would like to start by thanking my sponsors. Chris, Marisol, Jared, Bobby, Elizabeth, Marilyn, and of course my mom. If you'd like to become a sponsor and keep this class free and continuing for however long we must. Um, all the donation information is in the description. You can also find it on our Facebook page, TX Rockers. We also have an Instagram page if you are interested in joining that as well. We have an Amazon wish list. If you would like that information, please feel free to message us and we will send that to you post haste. As you can see, here are our rocks from last week. We did not get as far as I was hoping, so we are going to be continuing this class um, for this one, for this week, while hopefully also managing to get to our fruits. If not, fruits will become next week. Um, so here we have our little pepper, some peas, and our carrot. Super cute little monsters, really easy. And if you missed this class, feel free to go check out our video tab or go to our YouTube where I will be uploading the past class today. So, if that was not at all confusing. So I have some things that I, I don't know why I haven't shared with you before. I should have. It's tips and tricks. Um, one tip is you can make a palette pretty much out of anything. Like egg cartons. These are something that came around light bulbs. But they make really great little palettes um, and they're good especially if you're going on like trips to have that way you can make whatever but another one is so most people have probably figured out you can use like sticks to stir your paints but one of my favorite things to do is grab the Starbucks little um, steam caps I guess or spill protectors because you can use this end to pull paint and put it into your palette and then this end to stir. So it's very, very useful little tool. I have a bunch of these just sitting around my house because I collect them like a crazy person. Um, so we're going to go ahead and hop in. I don't really have examples for every single one that we're going to do today, but I do have examples for two of them. But we're going to start with an eggplant. And now the interesting facts, some little interesting things. Um, all the vegetables that we did not get to last time are actually agriculturally fruits. Culinarily, they are vegetables. But an eggplant, which is what this will be, is actually a fruit, as are avocados and cor sweet corn. Just some food for thought. Yes, I'm... I'm a miserable, miserable pun maker. Okay, so I'm going to take my dioxazine violet, and this is the Soho Urban Artist Acrylics, if you are interested. I get mine at Jerry's Artorama because they always have really good prices. I have posted about that on the page, but if you need more information, feel free to let me know. So this is what the color looks like once it's dry. I just put this coat on like right before I started class. Um, if you prefer the, the inside to be a little lighter, um, you can either mix this with a little bit of white or you can add a little light pink. It's up to you to, to just kind of ombre that color out a little bit more. 
Um, I might actually show y'all. Yeah, I did that wrong. Okay, so this is my dioxazine and white. Which, remember, when you're mixing paints, you need very little dark to your light. So if you had a thing full of white up to here, you only need like a little bit of the dark and then slowly make it darker. Not the other way around. It's very hard to lighten dark once you've gone too dark. So I'm going to show y'all kind of what I meant by this being a scoop. It just, it makes such a, such a great little scoop and they're easily washable, which I really like because I can just go over to my water and then use my paper towel to quickly get it off. And then I don't have to really worry about anything. Okay, so now I'm just gonna kind of put, because I'm gonna use my brush anyway to add more of this. It's just sort of to give it more of the appearance that I want. Alright, so you're gonna take a brush. It can be whatever brush you want, just not too big. I'm using an angle brush. You can use a round brush. Really doesn't matter. And we're just going to bring this out. And you may want to add a little water to your brush, but not too much. Just a dab. Just to kind of get those colors going. Now when you're doing ombres, remember not to like change the direction of your brush. So if your darks are on this side, keep your darks on that side. Don't, don't change your, don't go like this because you'll get dark in the middle. So see how I, I flipped it when I did it? That's what you have to do. You have to flip it. And I have this really cool little thing that was on our wish list. Um, that was sponsor gifted to us. Um, and what it is, is it's this little Lazy Susan. And I just put a piece of cardboard and then some non-slip, um, like, drawer stuff on both the top and the bottom to make it so that I can kind of spin it a little bit more without worrying about it going everywhere. <laughs> and you want to get your colors as smooth as possible when you're doing this because vegetables typically don't have color blocking. But if you do, it's not a big deal. You can always fix it. So don't feel like it's a requirement. Alright, so once you get to that level I would suggest rinsing off your brush and just sort of fixing in some of your colors. I'm hoping my internet doesn't drop because for some reason it's been acting up today, like my phone. So if the video catches, I'm very sorry. If you need me to go back through something, just let me know, and I will willingly do that. Right. So remember how I said we were going to add the dark at the end anyway? That's what we're doing now. We're just going to add it in. Isn't that just such a pretty purple? I love this purple. I forget to talk sometimes. I'm getting so lost in painting this pretty color. Alright, so there, now we have kind of our coloring. And if you want your 
welcome to kind of take your wet brush kind of just blend more again make sure you're not moving the uh, light to dark areas I will say one of the things to be careful about is too much water will cause some damage so you'll have to go back over it sometimes better to work light to dark instead of dark to light. Don't be afraid to like go in and re-establish your brush with more water or color. I'm just trying to add that shape of kind of what a eggplant sort of looks like with that kind of movement Dry my brush. And don't be afraid to mess up. You can always wash off your rock if you mess up to the point where you can't fix it. But usually you can just fix it. If you just keep painting, you can usually make anything look right. I do all the time. Like, quite, quite literally. I, I mess up constantly and just keep going and eventually it comes out like it's supposed to Okay, so there we go. We're going to set that to the side, letting it dry for a little bit. We're going to start with our base coat for our avocado, which is going to take a very similar property. Because we're going to take our greens and do a very similar thing. So this is one of my monster rocks that I did. And I'm going to take a little bit of primary yellow. Because to me, avocados tend to have just a little bit more yellow in them than usually light greens allow. So I got my rock. I've already base coated it white because base coating white is very important. Um, so we're just going to take just a little bit of yellow. I'm not going to take much. Like just a little bit. Right in the middle. And then we're going to take some green, some light green. And kind of make a little ring around it. And then we're going to wait on the last color. I know that seems weird, but you'll see why in a minute. So I'm just going to wet my brush just a little. Make sure all that purple's off of it. Definitely don't want that coming up. So see how I'm mixing it instead of doing the ombre effect? It's because I wanted my green to be just a little bit brighter with that yellow. So 
So now we're just going to even it out. And if you feel like you need a little bit more yellow, just kind of mix it in the middle. I'm getting way low, I'm so sorry. And then just bring it out. Okay, now we're just going to kind of pop it through so it gets even lighter. If you don't like that ring, that's okay. You just use some water to get it off. Very gradually add just very little water. Okay, so now we're going to add our medium green. And you may have to dip a couple times and that's okay. just a little bit too much. And if you want, you can use your finger, give it a little bit more dimension. Up to you, really. It's your rock. However you want to do, you do. Like sometimes I'll also just take a paper towel and kind of poke at it because, especially with like avocado, their texture. It's not just a color, it's, it's got texture on it. And so like some of these more textured... Um, plants I'll kind of do something more about. So you can add that and then just kind of add color throughout like this. There's a lot of different techniques you can use to add colors. So I have to let that dry before I can add any more coats because it's way wet. Okay, so now I'm going to keep my yellow over here. Because now, ah, we're going to do corn. Just a silly little corn. So, first things first, you want to make sure to make this V. And you can... Use a uh, pencil if you'd like to do this. Um, and as you can see here, I just did kind of like a V to a point where the, like the shuck would be, or whatever, shell. That's the word. 
You shuck it. <sighs> I'm not awake yet. And so if you make that V, it makes it a little easier color-wise later. Um, so the way I would do that is I would just take the yellow and just kind of make like the lines how I want them. So like that's the way I want my lines to be. And that's the way I'm going to make it. Then just color in with your yellow. And you can use bright yellow, you can use light yellow. It depends on what kind of corn you're making, really. I'm going to make kind of a sweet corn this time. And I'm just trying to make sure that all of the pockets of paint have been pushed in. There we go. Rinse out the brush. And then we're going to do... some light and you can do this before you can do this after I'm just gonna do it before because I'm kind of more pressed for time I will say if you have divots remember to just kind of push into them first. And I try to keep with the lines so it looks like it's kind of overlapping a little bit. So if you wanted to do like that on your lines and then just kind of bring it through. That's easier. Okay, so that's going to sit while we go back to the first one. Our eggplant. Which it occurs to me I could have easily done the next part on the already dried base coat, but oh well. <laughs> okay. I'm just gonna finish adding this dark around the edge because I just want it to be kind of dark around the edging. This would also, I suppose, work for like a spaghetti squash or um, zucchini. You can make a cucumber out of the shape. Or a pickle. I like pickles. It's really whatever you want. Okay. So now that that's done, we can put up our dark purples. Actually, we can put up our light purple, too. So let me go ahead and do that. Light purple goes here, dark purple goes here. Oh, I need my white and black. I'm gonna need my tight zinc white and Mars black also soon. Is all of this dry enough? Yeah. Okay. Do I have any of my sponsors? No. Awesome. We're gonna do it by freehand. So you're going to take your white... Oh, how did green get in here? Well, that's not fun. No, no. Always watch about color. 
kind of getting on other colors. I love these little things. I've had this paint in here for like maybe two months now, and it hasn't dried yet. I'm really impressed. Um, and these are the Double Take Creative Mark Artist Pods, like paint pods. Well, pots, I think. Either way. Okay. So we're going to take kind of a smaller brush to do our eyes. I don't like leaving um, vegetables, fruits, or, or rocks just in general looking too much like fruit. Or, or like the food it's supposed to be because I'm worried a kid might see it, think it's, you know, food and bite into it, which would not be good. So I'm very careful about that. Alright, so I'm going to make a face on mine. And there's all sorts of types of faces you can make. We've done quite a few of them here in the class, um, in past classes. I think I'm going to go with the one like we did on our birds, where it's just this like ridiculously big eye and then a small eye. And remember that dab technique if you find any divots. You can also um, use spackling to fill in your divots for those of you who are just joining our class. Um, and I have a previous class about that if you are interested. It is, um, I believe, on the end of the flowers video. But I'm not positive. I really should find it. On one of the videos. Okay. So there we have our eyes. And if you have any comments or questions, feel free to ask them in the comment section. I am watching, so I can see whatever you say. Um, I always forget to mention that. Alright, and then for our mouth, we're going to use a liner brush. This is a size... F mm, actually, I think I'm going to use... No, I think I'm going to go with it. I'm going to go with the size 4 liner brush, a round liner brush. Okay. So you don't want this to be too bulbous around it. So it makes it easier. And we're just going to make a little mouth. Something happy. So why not? Careful about how you hold your brush. It will change how it looks. I like making these little, like, cheek lines. My mom used to do them on my little, like, notes that she would leave me for my class, or for my, like, lunchbox. I always liked how that made the smiles look, just look super cute. Okay, and then I'm gonna add, like, a little nose. Which is just going to be like this little bump. And if you want, you can also add eyebrows. Don't worry, we'll line the eyes as well. Um, you can line them before or after you do the inside. doesn't really matter.
And there's our eyes. So now we're going to let that dry for a little bit so that we can continue it. And we're going to move back to our avocado. Which is going to get its darker coloring now. Um, I'm going to go back to my bigger brush. Now the cool thing about avocado is because it does have a peel, you don't have to blend this color as much. This one can just be your peel. Make a tiny coffee. Tiny Cotto. Alright, so there's our kind of peel. And then you kind of want to figure out where you're going to put the middle. And you don't have to have the hole for the um, seed. You could just make it like the interior like a scooped out one or you know whatever you want to do I like adding the the seed I think it's cute and I like using burnt sienna and burnt umber to accomplish this um, that's the other example rock okay so for this one I'm just going to take just a little bit of the brown. And then with our four brush, I'm just going to dip it into the, the darker. I'm going to put the darker Blend, 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 blend. Half of painting is just blending, let me tell you right now. And the way I'm doing it is I'm always doing outward strokes from the center, or what I perceive to be the center. Just to kind of give it just a little bit more dimension. Now 
And now I'm just taking the dark and I'm just rimming around the seed. And it doesn't have to be a perfect circle. Lord knows painting rocks is hard enough without adding in perfect circles. And then just sort of Bring in the darker colors. Oop. It's okay to mess up. Don't worry about it. See? Told you I mess up all the time. It's okay. Nobody's perfect. Alright, so now we've done that. And now you can do a face like how I did this one, which is just a silly face. Um, you can make it look sort of like our eggplant. You can make it a goofy face. It's all up to you. Um, I think this time I'm going to let it sit for a little bit, and I'll come back to it while I decide what I'm going to do with it. All right, so we're back to our corn. Oop. Sorry, didn't mean to shake the table. Alright, so with the corn, um, I did for this one dark lines through to make the corn look more like, you know, corn. You don't have to do quite so dark. I realized this, of course, after I'd already done super dark, but, you know, whatever. So I'm going to see what it looks like with this lighter color. Never done this before, so, you know, we'll find out. And for this one, I try not to do a perfect straight line. Because corn doesn't grow perfectly. I'm going to tell you right now. I grow corn. And it is not perfectly straight. Um, but I will tell you some interesting facts about corn as I make these lines. Um, there's a fungus that actually will take over and enlarge like corn kernels. It makes them look like really crazy. And it's referred to as Huitli Hoche. And it was an Aztec delicacy. Because if you cook it or eat it eat it plain on sweet corn specifically, it tastes very sweet. Um, but if you cook it, it kind of tastes like mushroom. Like it has the consistency of a mushroom. Um, and so they, they typically put it in, you know, omelets or whatever. It's really good as a quesadilla. Um, and things like this. Um, they have tried to get it to come to America. And it seems no matter what they call it, Americans just seem to have a problem with it. Um, but it's all, they renamed it when they brought it to America and they called it the uh, Mexican truffle. And I actually got blessed with some of them in my garden. And so I have been eating them, and they're really tasty. Just some weird facts about corn, guys. Which, again, also known as a fruit. Well, sweet corn is. I may have made a mistake making so many lines. But I'm gonna go with it. Because I am not the quitter. Okay, so you have your lines. Like I said, they don't have to be perfect. And then you're going to take your color and you're just going to go up and then just bring a little bit down on the corner. So it goes up and down to make it look more like they're popping out. So up and down. And 
and do this like a hundred times. <laughs> Hoping I have enough time to get through this one. Because it takes so long to do the kernels. Who knows? We'll see. And don't be afraid to mess up. If you accidentally have to color one in, guess what? You just made maize. Which is another type of corn. So really... It's okay. <laughs> I have been growing corn for two seasons now. Um, with varying degrees of success. I started in a container garden and actually did very well in my containers. And this year I decided to plant it in the ground. And that's when I found out about Wheatley Ho Hoche. Um, so, I'm not mad, per se. It, it does sort of destroy your crops, which is why... Typically, American farmers will just destroy those crops um, because you don't really get a full ear of corn after that. But you get this really cool other thing, so I'm not really mad about it. So I try not to make them even because while some are more even... Most of the corn I have picked have not looked perfectly even in heights or anything. That might be because of the Wheatley Hoche. I don't know. And just keep going and going and going. <laughs> so it doesn't look like we'll get to any of the actual fruits today. The culinary fruits, as it were. So next week will be fruits. That's a little thicker of a line than I wanted. And you can make these pretty thin lines if you want. You don't have to make them as thick as I'm making them. I probably shouldn't have made them as thick as I'm making them, but I have kind of an idea for this one that's going to be kind of silly looking. So, I have method. That will hopefully work. <laughs> Almost looks like a flag. The flag of corn. If I remember correctly, avocados were also eaten by Aztecs. In fact, I think the word comes from Aztec roots. Same with coyote. But don't quote me on that one, because I'm not positive on it. But I think I'm right. Okay, so now we have all of our corn. Isn't that cute? So 
So now I'm going to go ahead and do the darker parts of the leaves. Which is going to be... Kind of coming in here and lining where... The edges were. And I know a lot of uh, people who say that they can't really paint because their hands shake. My hands are constantly shaking. I will say that. I've just learned how to kind of monitor my, my shakes, I guess. And that just comes from practice. It's, it's just, you have to do a little bit of art every day until you get used to your own shakes. Because my hands shake something fierce. Hey! I was right. Avocado is Aztec. Go me. Okay. So we're going to let that dry. We're going to go back to our avocado. Alright, so we need our white, and this time, I'm going to do a different face. I'm going to put it on the seed. And you can do two eyes, you can do five eyes, you can do one eye, it's whatever. There are no rules. When it comes to making these guys, they're your buddies. They're your little pets. Or if you want to put them out, they're your gift to someone. And that's fine too. I'm much bigger. And make it a big guy. Uh oh. See that interruption you're doing. Okay, so there's our, our eyes. Then I'm going to go in with the black Ooh. and we'll kind of make like a cat face also do mustaches. I've done those on hedgehogs before and some of my monsters have had mustaches. You can do kind of whatever, glasses, etc. They are all up to you. It's really fun to do all sorts of things. Okay, so I'm going to put that to the side. I'm going to take my big boy back here. I'm taking a super thin liner. It's a 20 over 0, which is the like, smallest liner you can possibly get. And I'm gonna give it teeth. For its smile. Which may be slightly creepy, but you know what? I'm gonna roll with it. And then I'm gonna get a red. You wanna be careful with your liner brushes because they can 
um, fray very easily. And I'm going to take my red and I'm going to make a little tongue. And so specifically with this red, you may have to do a couple coats. But isn't it cute? A cute little eggplant. And you can add green hair if you want. You don't have to. We did that in last week with like our pepper. And all you would do is put a white base first and then just put green over it. Makes it real easy. Um, I don't think I'm going to add that to him. I like how he looks bald. So, actually, let's go ahead and add our eyes here, because we are running out of time. I'm going to put my eyes in the skin, like the shell. And I'm just making an oval look. I put this one sort of at an angle because that one's at the more of an angle. And then use black. I'm just doing a kind of a steely face. I'm just going to make it look silly. And then we want to line, again, the eyes. there. Now he's just kind of silly looking. Alright, and then for the, to make the corn look more dimensional, we're just going to add little highlights with white by just sort of tracing this top part, like one of the corners. And this will give the corn more life. If you're really ambitious, you could put a face on each individual kernel. I'm not that ambitious with five minutes left. Monster rock. first rocks I ever did when I started doing all of this, which was about a little over two years ago now. Um, my 
I think third rock was a monster rock, and that was when I really hit my stride at doing this. And I just love making monster rocks. <laughs> it does look like brain kernels. <laughs> it's kind of adorable. And so all you do is just continue making these little white areas on each kernel until you have filled all of them. And they don't have to be perfect either. You can always fix it later. Like if you go over and into the background, just go back over it once it's dried and the color of the background. It makes it really easy. Okay, so there's our corn. Our silly looking corn. Now for the avocado. I'm going to make the entire mouth red. Just so it looks a little silly. And you can choose whatever style of eye you want, like I've, I've shown you, there's, there's multiple ways. There's also, like, the anime style eye, which may be a little bit more difficult for people with shaky hands. Because it involves multiple kind of circles. And that is not always easy for people who have shaky hands. Believe me, I know. And then you just fill it in. And then line the outside of your eye. Which I'm trying to do very quickly. Remember, next week we're going to do fruits. We're actually going to get to real fruits. Not that these aren't real fruits, but culinary fruits. And there we go. And you can go back and you can outline this in black if you like. You don't have to. It's all up to you. You can also outline the seed, which I may do, and outline the rim just a little in a very thin line. Up to you. Um, remember, if you'd like to become a sponsor, that information is in our description. And I hope to see y'all next week. Have a great week. Bye!